working out on Tuesday with my trainer, and, and he was reading in Matthew 5 through the Beatitudes. Yeah. And um, he got the fact, I, I was, he, he, he understood, okay, this is Jesus talking to the Pharisees. It's before the cross. So, and, and, he, and he didn't have any problem with understanding the context of that. But when he got to 17, when it talks about Jesus fulfilling, I think it says fulfilling the law. Right. He wasn't sure what that meant. And neither was I right off the top of my head when we were talking to. It says, think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And I preached a whole message about that one verse. Yeah, I thought you did. Yeah, so you could send them that. Yeah. But essentially what he's saying there is that the word fulfill means a couple of different things. Um, what he's talking about with fulfill is he came to become the manifestation of everything the law was pointing towards. Okay? okay. So for instance, the law had animal sacrifices in it. Right. Right? Yeah. Well, he didn't come to destroy the need for a sacrifice. He came and manifested himself as the sacrifice. Right. So everything that's in the law, he manifested himself as the fulfillment of that thing. Just like we were talking about the time. Mm -hmm. That was in the law. He was the manifestation of it. The Sabbath. He was the manifestation of that. So these guys thought Jesus came to abolish the law. Right. He came saying, no, no, no. I didn't come to abolish the law. I came to reveal the law for what it actually is. And what is actually written there. Now in the Jewish mind, that's what that word fulfill would mean. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't speak of, uh, well, there's this law thing, and I just came to remove it out of the way. Right. It would have a connotation of um, revealing the authentic, or revealing um, something for what it actually is. Okay. You know, like Jesus came and revealed the Father right. for what it actually is. Mm -hmm. So part of what he's saying there is I came to reveal the law for what it actually is. Right. Okay. As opposed to, I, I think a lot of the teaching we've had said that he came to fulfill the law in that he performed the law perfectly in, in, in its right. entirety, which is completely posed up. And then, so if you, yeah, you wouldn't look at it from the works of love, but if you wanted to say he, he performed the law in the sense that he became he is the, the law. type, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. If you want to say he became the fulfillment of every type. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. He performed the law. Yeah, and that's what I told him. That's what, right. what I would say. But if you want to look at the carnal ordinances and say that's what he's talking about, yeah. that's not what the law pointed toward right. being fulfilled. Right. Well, the reason people ask that question, though, yeah. is because they have people telling them that we're still under the law. Oh, yeah. yeah. So when it says, I have not come to destroy, I to abolish the law, it lends credence to what people are telling them that we are still under the law. But Paul clearly says, after the cross, we are no longer under the law. Right. The cardinal ordinances yeah. of the law. Yeah.